I think the, the main driver is a sort of global trend towards more uh, passive investment strategies as opposed to more active ones. We've seen for a while now that uh, active fund managers are underperforming their benchmarks and in, in times like these investors are even more cost conscious and want the best sort of value and return for their money. Um, in terms of ETFs themselves, they're experiencing phenomenal growth and I think the main reasons of that are due to some uh, advantages with the ETF structure as opposed to things like mutual funds. Um, the first one of those is, is cost. They're typically much more cost effective, much cheaper, there are no load fees, uh, so that's extremely attractive for investors. Um, second of all, ETFs have a secondary market which means you can buy and trade them throughout the day. You can enter into positions and exit positions much more easily and mark your positions as well. So that is appealing to, to investors. And the final thing is ETFs are more tax efficient as well. And that's by nature of, first of all, having a secondary market and also the fact that redemptions can be done in kind. So there's a, there's a few main things that are powering ETFs, but those are the ones as I see it. Well, I think in, in Europe it's sort of well known that we're a little bit behind the US market, for example. So I, I think the first thing we can do is sort of look to the US market and see what the differences are. And there are a few differences. The, the first of all being how these ETFs are actually traded in the US. So 70% of volume is done on exchange in the US. Uh, and in Europe it's kind of the opposite. So we have 70% of volume is done off exchange, uh, OTC. So, so that's a key difference. Uh, the second difference is one of transparency as well. Uh, when you trade an ETF in the US, you have to report it. Whereas here in Europe right now, ETFs were not covered under the original MIFID directive. So there's, there's a lot more transparency we can learn from there. And the, the final thing is the participation uh, dynamic as well. So in the US, there's a lot more retail participation. 40% of US households own ETFs as opposed to only 11 in the EU. So I think there's a lot of untapped potential we could look at, uh, look at there as well. So there's been a lot of innovation in ETFs and the marketplace around them that has um, made it more difficult for participants. They need to improve their technology. So I think there's a, a lot of opportunity in, in tackling the new challenges that these uh, innovations present. And there's a, a few specific pain points we've been looking at, particularly uh, in activity. First of those being, for example, static data management. With more and more ETFs, with new issuers, and with new types of products, it becomes even more difficult to sort of manage the fund composition within the trading system. And that is a really important component um, to, to get right for, for everything else to work, including quoting and pricing and hedging. Uh, another key point is pricing of ETFs, and we're seeing it's becoming much more difficult to, to price ETFs with all the different kinds of new ETFs we're seeing. Um, for example, uh, if you need to price a, an ETF containing global stocks, not all of them are going to be open at once. So you need to derive some way of getting a price for the ones that are closed, uh, as a simple example. So we're actively investing in ETF pricing as well. And the final thing are new trading models and new venues that are, that are popping up to support this new uh, ETF phenomenon. And again, that isn't a particularly hard problem to solve, it's just time consuming for our clients. They don't want to be writing new connectivity on platforms that was never actually designed for particular market models. So we're also uh, investing heavily in that area as well. So we're very active in the ETF landscape. Uh, in fact, we've done quite a lot of research on the topic, including sort of current trends, drivers, pain points. And this research will be uh, available as a white paper that will be available on the ITVTY website. So that is, that is showing our sort of level of commitment to the ETF space. We, we found out a hell of a lot from this white paper and we've kicked off a, a number of initiatives internally to sort of tackle the biggest problems facing the ETF markets today. So we are investing quite a lot of money in that. Crucially though, we're working very closely with our clients to, to take their requirements into account while also having our core ethos of buy and build at heart. Meaning we want to 
build solutions that our clients can use off the shelf, but also we, we want them to be able to customize them as well. So they can buy our own software, our own solutions, but customize the little bits for them that make sense. So we're very much taking that to heart with every new initiative, uh, including in the ETF space.